What about the third, Final Chronicles? These books are the epitome of excess. I'm Bridger, and welcome to the Library Ladder. And so we come to the Final Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, a tetralogy consisting of the Runes of the Earth, Fatal Revenant, Against All Things Ending, and The Last Dark. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this set of four books was the most disappointing reading experience I've ever had, or at least that I can remember. You see, I love the first Chronicles, and I genuinely enjoy the second Chronicles, but I feel a lot of contempt for the final Chronicles. I'll admit I had misgivings about the final Chronicles going in. I thought the second Chronicles did a very nice job of bringing closure to the series, and I wasn't exactly captivated by the marketing blurb on the jacket flap of the Runes of the Earth when it was published back in 2004. The story seemed like a contrived and unnecessary continuation of the Land Saga. I decided then to hold off reading the Final Chronicles until Donaldson had finished all of the books in the series, which is what I do with most series these days, not wanting to be left hanging by another Song of Ice and Fire or Kingkiller Chronicles situation. Well, Donaldson finally finished the series in 2013, but I still wasn't ready to tackle it. It took me another eight years to work up the courage and the fortitude to crack the covers. Now, I dearly wish I could have back the many, many hours I spent reading them over the past few months. These books are the epitome of excess. Stylistically, they're badly overwritten. The final chronicles are as long as the first and second chronicles combined, but less actually happens in these four books than in either of the earlier trilogies alone. The writing is tedious. Occasional, unfortunate stylistic tendencies in the earlier chronicles are amplified and are on full display throughout these last four books. Donaldson's affinity for obscure vocabulary words and his aversion to clear and concise writing are completely out of control. There is an enormous amount of repetition in the books, exacerbated by his heavy reliance on telling rather than showing. The Final Chronicles spends an inordinate amount of time, perhaps a third or more of the total page length of the books, mired in the obsessive and unproductive thoughts of its protagonists. It's a serious problem because many of the extended interior monologues the readers are subjected to simply replay earlier monologues while adding nothing new to the understanding of the plot or the characters. The characters keep reliving in their minds over and over and over again the same events, the same conflicts, the same choices, the same moral dilemmas, but without resolving them. It's as if Donaldson doesn't actually trust his readers. He's constantly explaining things to them, but one explanation never suffices. Instead, he repeats explanations of character motivations ad nauseum throughout the books, as if we'd ever forget that Lyndon Avery and Thomas Covenant are crippled by grief, self-doubt, and self-loathing, or forget that the Harakai are guided by a pronounced and often misguided sense of honor. He explains, and then he explains the earlier explanation, and then he explains the explainer who provided the explanation, and on and on and on. But to make matters worse, whenever the plot really demands an explanation of something, Donaldson almost always fails to deliver. It's like Lucy and Charlie Brown in the Peanuts comic when Charlie Brown tries to kick the football and Lucy takes it away at the last instant. It happens repeatedly in these books that just when a character is about to reveal information of profound importance, something happens to prevent it. It's absurd how many times this kind of bait and switch occurs in the books, and it becomes completely predictable. The books would have been much shorter if the characters had just been allowed to share the information that they already knew. Also, the characters spend more time repeatedly rehashing the same internal debates and indecisions than actually doing anything that advances the plot. And keep in mind that the four books total nearly 2,400 pages of tiny print and 126 hours of audiobook listening time. That's a lot of character navel-gazing. 
as one example among many, the third book of the Chronicles, Against All Things Ending, spends its first hundred pages doing almost nothing. The main characters are gathered together and are trying to decide over the course of about an hour what their next steps should be. It's a pivotal decision for the characters, and an author who trusted his readers could have artfully led the characters to their decision within 20 or 30 pages. Instead, we get a hundred pages of repetitive conversations and internal thoughts, reminding readers just how dysfunctional, self-pitying, and unpleasant some of the characters are, without adding anything new to our understanding of them. This is typical of all four books. So, enough about the terrible writing style. Let's get to the plot. In a nutshell, it's ridiculous when considered in the context of the first two trilogies. I'd analogize it to a Marvel comic book series. In comic books, storylines from one series to another often don't match up, even across series featuring the same superheroes. The backstories, the timelines, even the characters themselves can change from series to series. To address this lack of continuity, sometimes comic book writers and movie makers will retcon a story, which is shorthand for creating retroactive continuity with an earlier storyline. That's what the final Chronicles of Thomas Covenant felt like to me, a giant retconning of the first two Chronicles. Similar to comic books, where the villains faced by the superheroes get progressively more deadly and powerful over time, raising the stakes from simple crime busting to saving the entire universe. Each of the three Chronicles of Thomas Covenant raises the stakes in a similar way. The first Chronicles has Lord Fowl, Ravers, and the Ill Earth Stone as its big bads. The second Chronicles adds the Sunbane, Kazarin of the Gyre, and the morally ambiguous Elohim to the mix of antagonists. And the final Chronicles includes most of the same antagonists from the first two Chronicles, and then proceeds to add several more, many of which strain credulity, given the enormous amount of power they wield and their complete absence in the earlier trilogies. Every time the main characters turn around, it seems like there's yet another, even worse source of evil and peril coming out of the woodwork. As a result, the plot is both boringly simple and overly complex. Donaldson attempts to squeeze the many, many antagonists into a basically simple plot and to create a mythology surrounding the Elohim and other supernatural beings that ties them all together. But it just ends up being an incoherent mess. It doesn't help that he relies on a time travel trope to retcon or explain away many of the inconsistencies with the earlier chronicles. Now, time travel narratives are very difficult to pull off successfully without introducing loose ends or paradoxes that annoy the reader. Let's just say that Donaldson's time travel plot is sloppy. Also, the complexity of juggling so many adversaries in the narrative led Donaldson to take shortcuts in the plot that are inherently lazy and frustrating. I lost count of the number of times the main characters were rescued in the nick of time by an unexpected savior or by the discovery of a hitherto latent or undiscovered power or capability. Those kinds of deus ex machina solutions to plot problems are a serious pet peeve for me and these four books are full of them. Also, unlike the first two Chronicles, which kept readers guessing how, or even if, Covenant would prevail in the end, the third Chronicles telegraphs the resolution of the central conflict between Covenant and Lord Fowl early in the first book, The Runes of the Earth. The solution to the climactic confrontation at the end of book four is completely predictable. So, the plot's bad, what about the characters? The central protagonists, Thomas Covenant and Lyndon Avery, are unlikable anti-heroes, but we knew that already from the earlier chronicles. It's frustrating, though, that neither of them seem to have grown much from their life-altering experiences in those previous books. They seem stuck in the same mindsets and behavior patterns as before, even though more than 10 years has passed for them since the events in the second chronicles. Both of them are intelligent characters who, without fail, 
overthink situations and decisions, admire the reader in their obsessive and repetitive agonies of indecision before finally making a decision. Why can't they just make decisions without needing hundreds of pages of repetitive wallowing and self-flagellation? And in Lyndon's case, when she does make a decision, it's often impulsive and completely disconnected from her lengthy ruminations that precede it. So, what point is Donaldson trying to make by forcing us to endure Lyndon's obsessively repetitive thought processes when they don't actually matter to the decisions she makes? To me, the real question about the value of these books is whether the supporting characters are sufficiently enjoyable to overcome the significant drag created by Covenant and Lyndon. As I mentioned in my reviews of the first two chronicles, the supporting characters in those books provided the real emotional core that made the books so satisfying. Are there equivalents to Foam Follower, Morum, Banner, or Pitchwife in the final chronicles? The short answer is no. Most of the central supporting characters are just cardboard ciphers who exist to advance the plot. They lack the emotional resonance found in the earlier chronicles and often serve mainly as objects of abuse. Unlike in the earlier books, Donaldson doesn't seem to love his supporting characters. Instead, he just tortures them. So if he doesn't love them, why should we? Finally, what about the themes in the books? Well, a case could be made that the overarching theme of the series is summed up by the quote from Clarence the Angel in the movie It's a Wonderful Life. No man is a failure who has friends. I don't really find that very compelling, though, because it's not at all clear why Covenant and Lyndon even have friends, considering how unpleasant they are to nearly everyone. Most of the characters who call them friends actually seem to like them more for their powerful abilities than for their personalities. Thus, a better case might be made that the series is really an extended morality tale about power and the harm it can cause. Or, alternatively, maybe it's just a 5,000-page ode to the challenge of overcoming mental illness. Regardless, do yourself a favor and definitely read the first Chronicles. Its influence on later fantasy writers is significant and unmistakable. And if you end up liking it, go ahead and read the second Chronicles. It's very enjoyable, despite its flaws, and it expands on the world building of the land. I then recommend skipping the final Chronicles entirely, both because it's not a very enjoyable read, and also because the plot gymnastics Donaldson engages in to retcon the story really diminish the significance and impact of the first two chronicles. It pains me to say that the last four books should never have been written, or at least should have been written very differently. I had to force myself to finish reading them. For almost any other series, I would have bailed after the first book in the final chronicles. I hope you found my thoughts on the Thomas Covenant series helpful. And if you did, please click the like button below, or post something in the comments section. Please also consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the library ladder icon in the bottom right corner. Thanks for watching.